Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with random reviews from the overflow room, the rapidly filling overflow, well, not so rapidly filling overflow room. Well, we're working on letter W as we go in reverse alphabetical order. And we have three composers here. I usually do three because I, that's enough for a nice little chat, I think. First, Paul Vranitsky. Now, Vernitsky has become quite popular lately. Well, he's not popular. He's getting recorded a lot. Naxos has a series of stuff of his. He lived from 1756, like, you know, like Mozart, to 1808, a little bit longer than Mozart. So we have here, uh, let's see, just two discs. Most of my Vernitsky is spread out upstairs in various bits and in, in, in other alphabets because actually the interest in Vernitsky post dates the overflow room by and large. I mean, it's been very, very recent. And, you know, he was a symphonist in the Haydn slash Mozart, you know, vein. Uh, and uh, some of his music's really charming. This is a delightful disc. This was part of that uh, Matthias Bammer, you know, Contemporaries of Mozart sort of series. It was all stuck together in a box at one point, or some of it was, um, with the London Mozart players. And we have his symphony in D major and the symphony in C minor and the grand characteristic symphony for peace with the French Republic. This is fun. Oh, it's so much fun. It has, it actually has like two versions. There's like a string orchestra version, I think. And there's like another version. And we talked about this before and I got them all confused and I'm still all confused, but it's charming music I and mean, it's fun music. The, the titles are The Revolution. It has an English march. It's got like percussion. Yeah. Um, the Fate and Death of Louis, Funeral March, and then English March, The Tumult of Battle, and The Prospects of Peace, Rejoicing in the Achievement of Peace. Yeah, it's a grand characteristic symphony, which means a programmatic work. That's really what that means. So there was this one on Chandos, which I have in the box, uh, or I have another one of them. I, mean, I have duplicates of all this stuff. That's why it's all down here. I didn't know how it was going to get packed and repacked and what happened. And here's the other world premiere recording of the same thing on CPO. Which one was first, actually? Does it say? This is 2002, and this one is 2004. So yes, this was the world premiere recording. This was the second world premiere recording. Well, you know what I mean. Um, it, this is with the NDR Radio Philharmonie under Howard Griffiths. And it also contains his Symphony in D Major, Opus 52, which is relatively innocuous compared with the Grand Symphony Caractéristique pour la Paix avec la République. So that's Vrenitsky, a couple of those that belong in the overflow room. And, you know, I just hang on to this stuff because you never know what's going to happen. You just don't. So there's that. Then we have, oh, this is delicious, Bill Warland. Bill Warland is a British light music composer. I love light music. I like this British light music series has some amazing stuff by people you've never heard of, except that when you've heard the tunes, you might have heard of some of them. Um, let's see, these are, these are works of the 1950s. Uh, to, let's see, other, well, from the 1950s. This was recorded in 2000 with the RTE Concert Orchestra under Gavin Sutherland. And we have, these are little tiny, juicy, you know, Leroy Anderson type things called Shopping Spree, Latin Lover, In the Shadow of Vesuvius, ooh. Um, Pepita, Scottish Power, Sombrero, Brighton Bells, Happy Hacienda. Bossa Romantica. See, 1950s was when all that Latin music started to infuse the light music tradition. And that shows here. That's really fun. And we've got, let's see, Dreaming Spires and the Sweet Tres Senoritas. Uh, the Rhapsody Tristes, a Millennium, a Celebration March, Amaro Dolce. It's Spring Again, Leeds Castle, and To Eleanor. These are, this is like, if you like Leroy Anderson, you're going to like Bill Warland. It's really fun. His tunes may not always be as 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 you know cool as Anderson's were. Anderson was an amazing tunesmith, but you know he's he's no slouch either, and the music is delightful. And he was born in 1921, and at least as of the time this disc was made in 2000, he was still with us. I suspect that now 
this being 2023, unless he's been very, very lucky. Um, he may be the late Bill Warland, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx him if I'm wrong. So there's that. So this goes into the overflow room, into the, the, the file there. Next, oh, this is, this is a historical recording. Most of my historical recordings are in the overflow room because I don't often listen to historical recordings. I mean, I listen to them and then I like put them in the overflow room. This is on Beulah. Remember Beulah? I don't think Beulah exists anymore. Um, this is Sir Henry's theme and variations. Henry Wood conducting the Queen's Hall Orchestra. The actual Queen's Hall Orchestra. And this has all kinds of neat stuff from acoustic recordings, three of them, to early electrical recordings. The recordings made in 1937. This, some of these are 1916, oh my goodness. Well, we have Delius's Dance Rhapsody. This is a great collection of stuff, by the way. Three Blind Mice, Symphonic Variations by Holbrook. The Tamaran from Fet de Hebe, de Hebe, Fets of Hebe, you know, that thing by Rameau. Look at that, recorded in 1923. It sounds like it's the original cast recording. Rameau, a special guest soloist. Yeah, there you go. Um, the Sailor's Dance from Rodrigo and the Rigodon from Almira by Handel, arranged by Henry Wood. Now we're in electrical recordings from 37. Handel's Samson Overture, Dvorak's Symphonic Variations, uh, the Ruslan and Ludmila Overture by Glinka, could be faster, frankly. Um, Bruckner's Overture in G minor. Whoa, isn't that a novelty in 1937? Oh my goodness. I mean, most Brucknerians didn't even know that the overture in G minor existed, although now, of course, it exists in 47 different versions, thanks to the Bruckner people. And then Symphonic Minutes by Dohnani in 1937, when they were kind of new. So that's, that's quite a selection of Henry Wood stuff on Beulah. And that, is that it? That's it. That's it. That's three. Oh, my goodness. Rather nifty, I think, some of this stuff. A little unusual, and that's what happens when you dig around in the overflow room. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.